So we're going to get into some more terms today. Um, we have, I think, a really interesting poem about spam that we're going to get to. And so a couple things that we want to think about here. Um, so I want to backtrack. I want to talk about metaphor a little bit more. I want to talk about a specific kind of metaphor, what we call an extended metaphor. So we're going to get um, this, this continued mention of spam in this piece. And he obviously means spam to mean something. Um, and so because it is so often and because it is clearly a symbol kind of standing in for something, we want to ask ourselves the question, uh, is spam an extended metaphor? And is it, um, and what is it representing if it is an extended metaphor? Um, hint here, I think it has something to do with uh, Pacific Islander culture. Um, we've talked about speaker, we've talked about audience. Uh, I think both of those are really important, um, but we haven't talked about tone. And so what is the attitude that the author has towards the work, right? Is it a humorous poem? Is it a love poem? Is it uh, an angry poem? Is it uh, a tortured poem? You know, what is, what is the tone? Um, and uh, I would really recommend when dealing with tone, that you simply look up something like tone words for poetry. Um, and these, you know, this will give you like so much language to think about as you're looking for these terms. Um, and it goes beyond what we don't want to do is say like, this is, um, this is a sad tone, right? It's, it's probably more than that. Or, um, you know, if I, if I say the whole poem is the same tone, I'm probably missing something. So we want to look for where it might be shifts in tone. Um, you know, where does it go from being, you know, defensive to being offensive maybe. Um, and again, just a lot of interesting language here. Um, if you look up terms like, like, um, like tone words. Um, there we go. Sorry, getting back to our terms. Um, he's also got um, what we would call uh, repetition in here. Sorry, I'm looking for it. Um, or a kind of repeat of this concept of spam, right? And we want to notice that this is a free verse poem, so I'm just going to label that for you. Um, it doesn't have a poetic structure, a, a rhyme scheme, um, which we didn't talk about, but my Angelou's piece had one. Um, here, we're going to see the repetition of spam is what is it doing, right? Well, it's doing the same type of thing that a structured poem uh, like a sonnet might be doing. Um, and that's how that repetition is working, right? So we want to pay attention to that. Um, and then finally... Let's talk about imagery a little bit. Um, you know, how does he appeal to our five senses? What are some moments in this poem that really kind of come alive um, for us? Um, and how does he do that? This is a great one to kind of point out. Um, how does he create an image in our mind um, that isn't just a spam can, right? Although I think he does that as well. Um, and, and, be aware imagery can appeal to more than just vision. Um, and it's going to be more clear than the spam can was blue um, with yellow lettering. Um, that's, that's not very imagistic, right? That's not very powerful. Um, but we want something a little more emotional, a little more drawn out, um, if we want to pick that as an example of imagery.